Welcome to Retro Gubbins. This time, a thank you and a look round my games room. Okay, here I am. I uh, don't know if you can hear me because I forgot to bring the microphone. Uh, I'm at Arcade Club uh, in Bury. Um, trying to find a quiet place, so I'm currently sat in a pole position cab. Um, so, there you go. Hello, pole position. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the 115 or so uh, slightly strange people who subscribe to me on YouTube and they seem like a good place to do it. Um, I've just been downstairs playing on uh, Big Saber, which is why I'm a sweaty mess. Um, and I'm just wandering around upstairs now in the uh, kind of more retro area, uh, enjoying the sights and sounds of the arcade. So uh, just wanted to say thank you and uh, it's much appreciated. See you soon. So, welcome to the games room. You'll have to excuse the amount of brown in here. Uh, we haven't decorated this room yet, and the previous owner was very fond of brown. Not just in here either, but all through the house. We're going to start off over at my cassette wall, uh, which is mainly Spectrum, although there are a few other formats too. Many classics here, and a good number of Sinclair produced titles along the bottom of the screen there, and a complete set, I think, of Firebird's screenshot inlay range. Along the top are some random trinkets and mugs, and moving down past more specky games, there are C64 and Amstrad tapes, followed at the bottom by more trinkets and my cover tapes. Uh, your Sinclair, Sinclair user Crash and some C64 ones too. I would like to complete the set, but there's rather a lot of those. Let's move around the room a bit, to the tall shelves and the display cabinet. On top there's one of many areas of random bits and bobs, but this one is home to my wonderful Horace plushie, created by the lovely Hannah over at So8bit. In the handheld section we start with my Tomitronics, followed by a Lynx, a Game Gear and a PSP. And on the right, an Argy Boy there, that I did start coding for, a remake of Run Baby Run from the Spectrum. Below are even more handhelds, and a couple of the ZX Spectrum Tribute Statuettes by Rob Buckley, which look amazing. Past Shenmue and the Bluetooth Spectrum, we come to a print by the lovely Sarah's Game Collection that I framed up. A link to her store and all the others will be in the description. Behind that, these drawers hold most of the controllers and joysticks etc uh, for the rest of my kit. Here's the first of many pieces of IKEA furniture, which seems to have become the uh, furniture of choice for many gamers now. Uh, the left two towers are mainly the larger Spectrum games, so big box, clamshells, double jewel cases, etc. Unfortunately, I filmed this before receiving my amazing crocheted lemmings characters, so I've bunged a picture there for you. The other two towers on the right are the PSP, Wii and PC areas, and down at the bottom a pile of things still to find homes, including Man Cave, a new C64 game on five and a quarter inch disc. Over now to the main kit wall, where we can see some framed ZX printer output from ZX Wife, obviously, with some books by Chris Wilkins, Stuart Ashen and Nostalgia Nerd, amongst many others on here. And then working down the tall end, we've got my Master System, my son's Xbox, a section with Sega Saturn, GameCube and my GX4000 cartridges, the VIC-20 that I recently fixed, the Atari VCS that I recently composite modded, my Dreamcast, Mega Drive, Saturn and Playstations. Moving along a section, we have my Wii and GameCube, the GX4000 that I fixed the joystick port on, my Yamaha Natural Sound cassette deck that I replaced the belt on, nestling with my CD TV. And here are the pair of modified Bandridge SCART switches that control everything. 
along with a three-way audio splitter to direct the sound and a small Bluetooth receiver. And on top of that section, one of the stars of my collection, the Vectrex, and as they were giving them away, practically, a PlayStation Mini. The far end of the units is where all the CRTs congregate, along with the QL, the BBC Micro, and then what's making all the noise is the C64, with the Amstrad and the Spec E 128 toast rack, uh, all on the CRTs. And the spec he joined there by the indispensable Div MMC Future from the Future was 8-bit. Similarly, behind the C64 is the SD to IEC, also from TFW, both of which allow the loading from SD card. The Amstrad is still loading from 3-inch disc. Any chance of an AMMC Future, guys? All the machines can have their sound directed to these great Jamo speakers that I managed to pick up as new old stock for £12. I'll let the Amiga sing to you while I show the audio switcher in action. This is the surprisingly good Chinese amplifier that I'm using. And obviously, I can switch the inputs on each TV and enjoy some retro sounds from those speakers. Well, that just about wraps up the tour. I'd like to reiterate my thank you from the start of the video. I really do appreciate your support in starting out with these videos, and I wouldn't have got around to it without that support from my retro friends on Twitter. I'll leave you with a few close-ups to enjoy. If you've spotted anything in the tour that you want me to talk about and show more of, please let me know in the comments. In the meantime, Please share the video if you enjoyed it, and also click the like button. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs>